This is the all-new Community Connection. I'm your host, Jade Harrell, keeping you connected to our community. It's a Black Marriage Day conference, helping both couples and individuals become more comfortable with intimacy, emotional, mental, and physical. I'm joined today by Dr. Lex, founder of the Institute for Sexuality and Intimacy. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. What a tricky area sometimes this can be when we get into the below the surface intimate areas of our lives. How nice of you to highlight spotlight and try to bring some healing and help to us in black marriages. I'm so excited. I definitely feel that for people of color, right, black people, indigenous people, Latino peoples, there's not a lot of places where we get to be safe. And our relationships should be a safe place. It should be a place where we can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about intimacy, I don't just mean what people do with their bodies. I mean the vulnerability that comes from being able to share secrets Mm -hmm. and take risks and be close to a person without feeling the need to be defensive and to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, then let's go back a little bit. Why are we defensive and don't feel safe in the place that, you know, even... um, culturally should be and has been known to be the most close you can ever be to another person in a marriage. Well, that is really interesting. You have to remember that marriage is new for black folks. Okay. Okay. So throughout of our history of transatlantic slave trade, of coming to this country, not by our own will, we weren't allowed to be married. Right. And those marriages were often dictated by somebody else. About that. And so you don't know if you're going to lose that person. You don't know if you're going to be that person that gets to parent that child that might come out of that relationship. So marriage is a really new institution to us. Mm -hmm. Add that on to oftentimes we don't get to define our relationships. We have other systems. So we let the church define our relationships. We let what we think God is supposed to do define our relationships. And then we come into relationships from these gender roles Mm -hmm. that we don't necessarily have clearly defined for ourselves. So a man is supposed to do this and a Mm -hmm. woman's supposed to be Mm -hmm. doing this. And because those systems have actually come up with what marriage is supposed to be, it's only supposed to be between a man and a woman. Can't be any different. I'm hoping you hear all of the satire in my voice with that. (laughs) But... We don't really know. And then we're wounded. It's already been shown that trauma passes down through DNA. So we've learned that we have to survive and we have to thrive. And we've learned to do that ourselves. We haven't learned to put that trust in other people yet. And then we go through our regular lives in our regular times and we get hurt. We get hurt by hurt people. And at the time, it's really hard to know that they're hurt people, too. You don't care because they hurt your feelings. You're like, no, they just suck. I don't like them. They're evil people. Why would they do this to me? And now you're trying to come together in a relationship and share love. And you don't think that you're worthy of that love. Sure. And you're trying to prove yourself. So we're coming to the table with some baggage and in some cases, a little bit of damage. How would we go about the healing So that is why I'm super excited. I believe that every person brings stuff to the table. It is not my job to fill you up with information and knowledge. You have information and knowledge. You're an expert on your life. And so at this conference, each of the seminars we're going through are actually experiential. So you will get up and do stuff and be in activities. You will engage with one another and with the facilitator. It's not just a lecture where you sit there and have somebody talk at you for an hour. Oh, wow. It's you putting out your own stuff as far as you are comfortable and then reaping and taking what's useful for you and leaving what's not. Mm -hmm. So what what will be offered? What is at the table? What will be the serving? (laughs) So we have a couple of sessions by some really dynamic people in the St. Louis area. Um, One is Afrosexology. So they are a group of young women of color and they're talking about sexual satisfaction relationships. So how to open up that conversation, how to navigate and communicate around satisfaction, which can be a touchy area. No, for sure. Everybody thinks they're the God and goddess in the bedroom, which hopefully you're hitting all the spots you need to. And if not, how do you say that to somebody you care about? Like, actually, you know, I've been faking for a while or no, I really don't like that. And especially for women, women have not been empowered to use their voices. I always think of the color purple. Right. And they're like, no. It's not good. I don't like it. I just count to 40 and close my eyes and then it's done, which we have a great, awesome power of the erotic. 
but we haven't been taught to teach into it. Mm -hmm. Then there's people who are coming for Dr. Claudine. So Dr. Claudine is actually a professor over at St. Louis Community College, and she's talking about a divorcee story. And sometimes all relationships don't work out. All marriages don't last 50 and 60 years anymore, and that's okay. It's actually been proven that we have a three-year glitch now instead of the seven-year itch because of (laughs) technology. (laughs) Right, we're connected in various different ways. So at three years, it's like, I don't know if I want to stay here with Mm you. You're getting on my nerves. (laughs) But for people who choose a divorce, and that's the healthier decision for them and their families at times. So Dr. Claudine is going to talk about lessons you should learn when you go through that divorce Mm -hmm. and how to trust again and how to come up and be like, okay, now I can do this from a divorcee's perspective. Yeah. Right. Coach yeah. Shaquan is amazing. <laughs> uh, she's going to be there, too. And she's going to be doing her own curriculum on Let's Be Real and talking about respect and energy and awareness and love. And you're going to learn some communication skills that are your own vital, and your partner's vital communication. Right. Skills. And it's not the five love languages. It's actually something different. So, yeah. Right. So you can so go take that online quiz. This, yeah. That's great. <laughs> but this is something different. And so you can be like, oh, this is why you're authoritarian. This is why I have a reaction to you when you talk to me that way. OK. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'm super excited about my own session. My own session is the fun session. OK. It's really erotic games. Erotic so games. learning to tune into your partner a little bit differently in fun ways. Right. So we make football fun in my session. <laughs> if you don't enjoy football, we're going to make it fun. And your partner, if they enjoy football, will enjoy it, too. How about that? And they'll still get to watch the game and you won't be bored out of your mind. That's a clever way right? to I bring promise things you will together. be cheering at the end of it, too. Mm-hmm. There's a moral in that. There's a lesson in that, in that it's not so much the activity, but how we engage one another around those activities. huh? It's, it's a thing called compersion. Hmm. So Talk compersion means I am happy for your happy. For instance, if I had a partner who enjoyed fish, like watching fish in an aquarium, I could care less about these fish walking around and swimming around and doing whatever they do. But my partner really, really enjoys it. And it makes me happy to see my partner happy. So my partner is like, I want to go get some new fish. I'm like, okay, let's go get some new fish. You excited about it? Sure. <laughs> I pay for a couple. How many you going to scoop up? Mm-hmm. Right? And so they're doing all the research around this fish in this mm-hmm. aquarium. Again, I don't care if it's a saltwater tank, a fresh, I don't know what the pumps are. Sure, but you're excited but about. you are happy, and I love seeing you mm-hmm. happy. What we see oftentimes is that self-focus. So I don't like to fish. I'm not gonna get involved Mm -hmm. and be around you with that smelly fish or boring fish or long drawn out whatever I don't like about fish Mm -hmm. and it seems that there's no space in the middle for couples to meet when that's going on can you talk a little bit about that and how you would address that dilemma I would even say for individuals, right? So for individuals looking to date, they're like, oh, we're not compatible because I don't like to do the same things you like to do. And you, we have to be in a form where we can be individuals and still be there to support whoever we're with and choosing to support. We call that differentiation. I'm throwing out a lot of big words. Mm-hmm. Right, Compersion and some themes, right? I'm, I'm keeping them here. So differentiation is the I can stand on my own feet and handle all my emotions but I can support yours. Mm-hmm. We're not feeling the exact same things. But I can support. How do relationships last for 50 years if you guys are feeling the exact same things at the exact same time? That doesn't really make much sense. You're not your own individual people. And you've met those people. I... They're like, we do this and we do that and we, we, we. And it's always them together. You can't invite one person somewhere without, without the, the other. other person. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I swear you guys are not conjoined twins. What is going on? <laughs> well, I just like, you know, this person's energy. But it gets stale. Really quickly, because you're not bringing in new things into the relationship. What's the importance of bringing in new things to the relationship? How important is it? And suppose then, as we talk about with women, there are areas of discomfort that may have come from past or may mm-hmm. be just plain old, I'm not comfortable with my leg up that high. You mm-hmm. know? <laughs> Yet. Well, right. <laughs> well, see, build, build on that. Right. So I think that specifically for women, it's really important because... We tend to get into an idea of self-sacrifice equals goodness. Mm -hmm. So if everybody in the house needs shoes, I'm the last one to get shoes because that makes me a good mom and that makes me a good wife. If my partner wants to do this thing or my parents want me to do this thing, I'm going to sacrifice my time, my one-on-one, my monies 
in order to make sure that they're taken care of because that makes me a good daughter, a good partner, a good teacher, a good whatever. Yeah. So men typically don't have this socialization. They're not taught this way. But women are. And it's a hard thing to get out of, of realizing that you deserve the same respect you give to everybody else for yourself. And when women do that, they're called selfish. They're trying to be masculine. Um, They're the dominators. They need to learn how to be more submissive. But it's really a, I need to take care of myself. And for relationships, that's who that person is falling for. They're falling for you. They're not falling for a glob onto themselves unless they're like severely narcissistic and maybe sociopathic, (laughs) right? That's a whole different level. But they're falling for who you are. And so I've heard that the most beautiful thing to see is a woman who is flourishing in her own. To see that and be like, ah, yeah, she's hot. And I saw a meme. It was like, if you can't help her be more her, leave her alone. Mm -hmm. I like that. (laughs) Right? So it's leave her alone if you can't Mm -hmm. help her be more Mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. Very, very valuable. A couple of others in the lineup. A couple of others in the lineup include, Mm -hmm. um, so Dr. Not doctor, I'm sorry. DeAndrea Blaylock, she's not a doctor. She is getting certified, though. And actually, this, I think, is one of the things that will really hit home. We're in the Bible Belt. But she is known as the Christian sex maven. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. And so she's talking about holy sex. And coming from a really Judeo-Christian context and talking about what being sexual within and outside of relationships look like for people who are followers of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes there can be what we call a dissonance, a strong moral value that you have and that you believe, but then you learn knowledge and information that is different. (coughs) And so it's like, well, how do I meet these two things together? Because one tells me it's really wrong, but this other knowledge says it's okay. And now I'm really uncomfortable. So her session, and she's also a therapist, is trying to help people have those two things meet in a more comfortable space. Smart, smart. Right, and so those are those are who we have presenting. What an excellent array of information and exchange. Send out the invitation. Um, tell us a little bit about what brought you to this work and some of your background. So I am the coolest nerd you will ever meet. <laughs> I mean that sincerely. Like, I will do a rag top. Oh, oh wait, y'all might not know what that is anymore, huh? Okay, <laughs> don't judge me. Um, so I have a background in physics, mm-hmm. in pre-med, and I'm from Atlanta. I was going to go to med school and do reconstructive surgeries. And I got to a point where... I realized I wasn't going to be able to make money at that if I didn't do like nose jobs or boob jobs. And I didn't really want to put people into this standard of beauty that tells me that I'm consistently ugly. So I am a woman of African descent. I have a broader nose. I'm just coming to the terms that I might be a little bit light skinned. Um, (laughs) I have a rounder shape and a curvier shape and I'm heavy set. So according to American standards, I'm not cute. And I was like, huh, I don't really want to do that. That's kind of hard. I don't want to be like, what's wrong with your nose, baby? I don't don't really want to fix that for you. I think it's beautiful. It fits your face really well. Right. And so I said, how can I heal people from inside out instead of outside in? Oh, that's therapy. Mm -hmm. I was like, huh? Okay. (laughs) Well, I find that people don't talk about sexuality. They talk about sexual intercourse, Mm -hmm. which is something different than what I talk about on a daily basis. Define the difference. So sexual intercourse is what people do with their genitals. Sexuality is an all-encompassing idea about your identity, about your health, about your religious expression, about sensuality, intimacy, and even sexualization. So how sexuality and power meet. Sexuality is all-encompassing. And oftentimes I find that people get hung up on these first three letters. Mm. And I'm like, (laughs) actually, (laughs) I'm talking about this whole existence of a whole nother idea around more than what people do with their genitals, mm-hmm. right? And I'm a sexologist and people are like, what is that? What is that? And they giggle at me and then they laugh and they ask if it's a real thing. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yes, that's what I have a doctorate in. Okay. And it's the study of human sexuality behaviors. And so what goes into that? How you come to who you are, how you come to identify your level of femaleness or maleness, right? And how those things are constructed in the world. I tend to study black women in power around sexuality and trying to help black women be empowered in their sexuality, especially in the faces of oppression that they see. But that's my one spiel. We're a whole world of sexosopher- sexosophers and sexologists. So 
there's so much out there that we talk about Mm -hmm. that's more than just genitals. What a powerful idea. We'll send out the invitation for your event. I will definitely do that. And it is March 26th. It is starting at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. is when you can come. You can register on site if you like. You can also go through my website, which is Lex, L-E-X-X, sex, S-E-X, doc, D-O-C, dot com. And it's going to be at the historic Harristow State University. So it's an HBCU in St. Louis. We actually partnered with the Division of Counseling and Prevention Services. So money and funds from this event go back to help them do the work that they're doing on campus with our students who are our future leaders and run some of their programming. Excellent. So I'm super excited to have that and be able to give back to them as well. It's $15 at the door and it's a couple of hours to come out. You get some swag. I got some <laughs> special gifts for people. I'm really excited about a luxury lubricant, just saying, that's in the bags. All right. And we also have some awesome black owned businesses there as well who will be doing some free giveaways. There's earrings and customized glass sets, as well as some other maybe private things that you might want in your collection, too. Oh, my. Well, certainly sounds exciting, engaging, informative and educational and definitely well due and past its time. Uh, Black Marriage Day Celebration Community event happening on March 26th. Free parking at the William Clay Early Childhood Center at Harris Stowe State University. Going to be a place for you to get those breakthroughs. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Lex. Thank you. Brown James, LMFT, founder of the Institute for Sexuality and Intimacy, LLC. For more information, you can call 314-548-9436 or visit LexSexDoc.com. That's L-E-X-X-S-E-X-D-O-C.com. Love, learn, and flourish. Yes. Good one. All right, that's it for this week. If you have questions or comments or have something you'd like to include in the community calendar, you can leave a message on our message box at 314-333-8369, 314-333-8369. And for more information about our show or any of our guests, you can visit us online and listen to the podcast at Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And search Community Connection with Jade Harrell. You all be blessed, do blessed, and take care.